My beloved brothers and sisters, we come together to proclaim the genuine hope of our deliverance and salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, the crucified, the risen, the ascended, and the returning Lord. Merry Christmas, and welcome to this traditional Christian Christmas church service for 2022. I'm Pastor Joseph Clark of the Christian Leaders Alliance. All denominations, all people, all nations are welcome to worship this Christmas by way of this online video. We come together today accepting one another as Christ accepts us, which is on the basis of repentance and faith. As Christians, from the moment we come to Christ, we are assured a life of joy and suffering. We worship together to rejoice in Christ together and to support each other in our struggles. We are at peace in Christ and at war with sin. This is the essence of fellowship, that we come together in discipleship. Isaiah, in chapter 9, verse 6, wrote 700 years before Christ, quote, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, loving God, Almighty Lord, we praise and worship you with sincere love, with sincere confidence, with devotion, and with pure joy. Thank you, Lord, for this day in which we commemorate the birth of your only Son, that all those who believe on him shall have eternal life. We humbly offer this time of worship up to you. Please anoint it as holy. In the glorious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art thou in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us worship by song. Please join me as we sing, Hark the Herald's Angels Sing, and worship in Jesus' name.
Beloved, please join me in prayer. Micah, in chapter 5, verses 2 to 4, wrote 750 years before Christ. But you, Bethlehem, Aphrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned, until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock, in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Let us pray. Brothers and sisters, let us take a moment to close our eyes, and in our minds and in our hearts, let us commune with the Lord as we offer up to him the names and faces of those who are in need. And let us pray for God's healing, for God's supplication, for his intervention and guidance in their lives. Heavenly and Almighty God, we raise these faces and names up to you, Lord, that the miraculous healing hands of Jesus Christ be placed on them and provide mercy, healing, and relief. We pray for the peace of Christ in their lives. Our assurance of peace is found in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, for it is written, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you please join me as we continue with our musical worship? Let us sing Joy to the World.
Let us pray. Heavenly and loving Father, we praise you for your love in coming to us, unworthy though we are. Give us grace to accept the Christ who comes in your name and the courage to be Christ for others. We praise and thank you, Creator God, for you have not left us alone. Each year you come to us, Emmanuel, God with us in a manger. Each time you come to us in the broken bread and the cup we share. In time or out of time, you will be revealed and we shall see you face to face. Give us courage, God, our strength, to see your Christ in all who suffer. To be hands to the helpless, food for the hungry, and rescue for the oppressed. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I shall walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you art thou with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all of the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the holy and blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Children of God, let us as a community in faith publicly announce and witness to our faith. The response to the following questions in the affirmative is Amen. Brothers and sisters, do you reject Satan and all of his evil works? Amen. Do you take God the Father to be your God? Amen. Do you take God the Son to be your Savior? Amen. Do you take God the Holy Spirit to be your sanctifier? Amen. Do you take the Word of God to be your rule? Amen. Do you take the people of God to be your people? Amen. And do you hereby dedicate and yield your whole selves to the Lord? Amen. And do you do all of this deliberately, freely, and forever? Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, we firmly believe that you are one God and three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe that your divine Son became man, died for our sins, was resurrected from the dead, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the resurrection of the body the forgiveness of sin, and life everlasting. And we believe all of these truths, Lord, because it was you who revealed them to us. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are all those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And blessed are all those who are persecuted in the name of Jesus Christ or for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Praise be to God. John in chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 and verse 14 wrote 50 to 60 years after Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise be to God. My brothers and sisters, once again, let us commune with the Lord. Please close your eyes. And in our hearts and in our minds, let us offer up the faces and the names of those whom we seek forgiveness from, those whom we need to forgive. And let us express our regret for any thoughts, words, or actions of our own, which has hurt the heart of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the riches of your kindness, forbearance, and patience, knowing that your kindness has led us to repentance. We confess that we've not always extended that same patience and kindness towards others who've offended us, but instead we may have harbored bitterness and resentment. We forgive them, and we seek their forgiveness. Our assurance of forgiveness can be found in Acts chapter 16, verse 31. For it is written, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. You and your household. My brothers and sisters, let us continue our worship. Would you please join me as we sing Silent Night and worship in the precious name of Jesus.
Let us listen to what the Holy Spirit has to tell his church today. Our readings are going to be, we're actually having three readings. We're going to have one reading that's uh, lengthy, followed by two shorter readings. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, during this time of the year that we commemorate the miraculous and joyous birth of your Son, God the Son, we set aside the distractions, Lord, of this fallen world to rejoice as your children, together in your holy word, for the church is the body. We come together in fellowship and in discipleship as we receive your divine counsel, as we heed your wisdom and reflect your great love. We humbly ask for your blessing upon this time together. In the holy name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In our first reading from the New Testament, from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Our second reading and third reading, the first is from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 to 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And our third reading from Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I pray that the Holy Spirit anoint my words and speak through me to be heard and felt by every heart. I gratefully dedicate myself to you, Lord, for your glory entirely, not for my own. Your words entirely, Lord not my own. We open our hearts, ears, minds, and souls to your word. We seek your truth, your light, your wisdom, and your grace. And we devote this time to you humbly. In all things, let your will be done. We invite you to speak to us through your holy word in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Charles Swindoll once wrote, Christmas offers its wonderful message, Emmanuel, God with us. He who resided in heaven, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Spirit, willingly descended into our world. He breathed our air, felt our pain, knew our sorrows, and died for our sins. He didn't come to frighten us, but to show us the way to warmth and safety. End quote. 
Beloved family of God, our guide is with us. This Christmas, we face many challenges that are disheartening. The war in the Ukraine, a potential economic recession, continued lockdowns and illness related to COVID, continued corruption discovered in publicly traded companies, severed relationships due to disagreements on public policy and governance. The church, the body of the one true God is persecuted more than ever. Some pastors this past year have fallen into temptation and brought shame to the faith. Underfunding of some churches, overfunding of some churches, which leads them to walking off the path of the Christian walk in some cases. Mismanagement of money by families. All too often, we now see a generation of youth who, between their parenting, their teachers, their peers in the internet and media, are a generation of youth who believe that if their parents discipline them, that it represents a human rights violation. A generation of young people who believe that their parents and the other adults in their lives rank beneath them and behave as such. My beloved brothers and sisters, please give me your fullest attention because I have some really, really great news for you. I have read the last chapter of the Holy Bible and guess what? We win. Who do I mean by we? I mean those who are saved in Christ. And what does that mean? How are we saved in Christ? We are saved when we repent and we accept Christ with all our hearts as our Lord and Savior. Now, many believe that they cannot be Christians. They say, I'm not that good. I cannot possibly be sin-free. I cannot do enough good or afford to give to charity or resist getting angry in traffic or resist my temptations of the flesh. Well, I have further good news for you. Are you listening? That is not the prerequisite to salvation in Christ. God knows that you are weak. God knows that we are sinners. God knows that we are still going to give in to temptation. Salvation in Christ is received, not achieved. I repeat, we are saved when we repent and we accept Christ with all our hearts as our Lord and Savior. What does that mean, repent? It means to change direction to stop walking away from Christ and to walk towards him, to become his disciple, to become holy. To be holy means to be set apart. Receiving Christ into your heart is to give yourself to him. When we do this with sincerity, we are justified instantly. By the grace of God, we are made holy. We are set apart. We are saved. And then a lifelong process begins of sanctification in which the Holy Spirit guides us and conflicts us and works through us. Now, our reading today is authored by the Holy Spirit, inscribed in the human hand of Luke, a disciple of Paul. Luke was a physician who carefully researched his gospel, which he begins with, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Luke was verifying what many were now handing down. His is known as the thorough investigative account of Christ's ministry. What is God telling us by coming as God the Son in a manger? We do not have to have prestige or wealth or comforts. Give us this day our daily bread, not a week's worth, just our daily bread. The angel's first words to the shepherds, do not be afraid, God is worthy of our praise, our love, and even our fear. As Jesus said, I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who after he has killed has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. The shepherds instantly believed the angels. They went directly to see Christ. The Lord's messenger surely would not lie. And thus, we must also always keep a promise. Keep our word. The shepherds spread God's word charitably. They shared the announcements of the birth of Christ with everyone. 
as we are commissioned by Christ himself to baptize all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, I have a story which I wish to tell you, a fable. Once upon a time, there were two little mice. They were brothers, and they lived their entire lives in a piano. This was the only world world that they knew. Their parents and siblings had all died of old age. However, they were the youngest, and so they were still healthy, and they were all that remained of their family. They spent most of their days in awe, enjoying the wonderful music that filled their piano world. The music came from someone and somewhere invisible to them. They were raised by their parents to believe that the music came from a great giant being who played the piano. The two mice loved to think about and talk about the great player who made the wondrous music. One day, one of the mice went exploring. He went throughout the piano, but he came back very thoughtful and sullen. There is no great player, he told his brother mouse. It's all a myth. The music is not made by a great player. It is made by wires and hammers and some form of grand mechanical assembly. I've seen it with my own eyes. The mice gave up believing in a great player. They felt that they were very smart and had figured it all out. Since they had discovered the design and construct of the piano, they examined the wires and the mechanics of the piano frequently and had a good handle on how the music was made. Life changed for them. Now that they had knowledge, they had no need for a silly fairy tale such as a giant music maker who played the piano. It seemed that knowing how the piano worked made them feel smart and independent. They never inquired amongst themselves about who constructed the piano or what the origin of the wires and assembly truly was. Because that question hurt their pride and it threatened their egos, which now were inflated by the feeling of independence and knowledge. They enjoyed the feeling that they were in control of everything. Meanwhile, outside of their tiny little world inside the piano, the great player continued to play on. Brothers and sisters, do we know people like that? People who are mice in the piano. As we celebrate Christ's birth this Christmas, we're surrounded by a fallen world, which in accordance with prophecy is going to hell in a handbasket. Evil and ignorance surrounds us. However, we are children of the one true almighty God, creator of all that is known and unknown, all that is seen and unseen. Christmas is just as beautiful a celebration as it ever was, even more so. Luke accounts for the prophesied birth of our Lord and Savior. It is a humble, meek, glorious birth, a birth that tells all those who are poor and marginalized that God has walked in your shoes and God is relatable. He came to us as a man. He gave us a face and a name to relate to. He gave us a life which exemplified what we endeavor towards, knowing that we will never achieve Christ's level of sinlessness. But in the process, we shall fight the good fight. We shall finish the, finish the race and we will keep the faith so that when we face our God for all of eternity, he will greet us with, well done, my good and faithful servant. My brothers and sisters, God is so in charge, so glorious, so almighty and powerful that I I feel completely inadequate to deliver this message to you. I'm not worthy to deliver this message to you on my own, but by the grace of God through the commission of Christ, here I am in all of my humility to tell you, God is in control. This Christmas, as we face the harshness of this fallen and unbelieving world, rather than focus on the various forms of defeat, Focus on how you are fighting the good fight, how you are running the race, and how you will keep the faith as God's good and faithful servant. Praise God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Merry Christmas. Amen. Please join me in musical worship as we sing the hymn, The First Noel.
My blessed brothers and sisters, I wish you a most excellent, wonderful Christmas and an amazing new year. Please join me in our closing prayer and our benediction. Let us pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for sending us your only begotten Son. Praise to you, God the Father. Praise to you, Jesus Christ, God the Son. And praise to you, God the Holy Spirit. We pray in the most sacred and holy name of Jesus the Christ. God be on our minds. God be in our eyes and how we see. God be in our ears and how we hear. And God be on our tongue in all that we say. And may God be in our hearts always. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. This Christmas service has ended. Brothers and sisters, let us go from this place proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, the peace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the grace of our Lord and Savior and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and yours this Christmas and evermore in the holy and blessed name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our service has ended. Go now this Christmas in the name of Jesus Christ to love and to serve the Lord. Merry Christmas, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me this evening for this online Christian church service. Go in peace, safe travels to you and yours, and God bless you.